Hi, I'm Kelly at Book and Paper Arts, and today I have a video showing you how to make a tiny book from tea bags. Yep, tea bags. A few months ago, I made two videos showing how to use tea bags as a mixed media art supply, and this was meant to be the third in the series. Oops, I got distracted. But it's here now. And please join me as I show you how to make these little art journals it's easy, fun, and very inexpensive. If you like journal arts, altered books, and vintage books, paper, and other ephemera, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Be sure and turn on the notifications, and you will have more of them in your life. Let's go make little books. Before I talk about preparing tea bags to be made into book pages, I want to state the obvious, which is that I like a distressed style. But that's not for everybody. And if you pr prefer that your tea bag book pages look more like a conventional book, that is very possible. You just want to take care when you're trimming and preparing, and you can do that if that's your style. But stay with me because a lot of what we're going to be talking about preparing and sewing will apply to that too. I already, as I said, I already have some videos about preparing your tea bags to be used as a mixed media art supply. So I'm not going to go over all of that today. I am going to link to those videos in the text below this one so that if when we're through here, you're not really sure, you can consult those and you'll find everything soup to nuts about preparing your bags. Today, the least amount possible that you need to know to get started is I recommend that you dry your tea bags with the tea leaves still inside. It's easier to empty and as the uh, liquid evaporates from the tea leaves, they often stain your paper, leaving uh, interest and, and texture and designs there that are really pretty. You can dry them in the sunshine. I live in a cold climate, so I put mine in a shallow bowl, and then I put the bowl on top of my radiator and leave it overnight. You can also do this in the oven. You can dry them in the oven at a the lowest heat you can uh, manage. You don't want to cook them. You just want to dry them. So if you do them in the oven, keep an eye on them. Now, once your tea bag is is dry, you want to open it up. And you can do this fastidiously. as I've just done. And now you could either use this as your page like this, or you can open it along the seam very carefully. Tea bags come in different sizes and shapes, and each one is probably possibly going to give you a different uh, shape of, of page for your book. So you just want to experiment with that until you get the one that you like. So now we have a different resolution altogether. It's just up to you. Play around with it. See what talks to you. Alternatively, alternative to fastidiously, you can just trim away that part there. and just get started. Be sure and compost your leaves. They're very good for your garden. And so now I have the same idea or I could open it up. Here's a round one. Just wanna go over here very carefully as close to the seam as I can.
and empty that out. And now we're ready for the next phase. A tea bag is delicate. And because our book pages are going to be standing up to some gluing and painting, stamping and ink and whatnot, the papers need to be prepared and made more robust. I don't want them to be, to be all stiff like a, a canvas, but they need to be more formidable. There's a couple of ways that you can do this. I did this tea bag using spray starch. Just the plain old stuff that you buy in the supermarket when you're going to iron your shirt collars. And you just spray the starch on your bag and then iron it with a dry iron. Hey, presto, that's it. And you get this nice crispiness. And it also gives it a little coating so that now I could draw on it with charcoal or pe graphite pencil or, or paint on it and it's going to have more pop. But the way that I do mine most of the time is by uh, painting it with, uh, I guess it's, it's kind of a homemade Mod Podge. It's two parts PVA white craft glue to one part water. And you just want to stir that up really well because the, the craft glue is going to want to sink and separate. And then just paint your tea bag. I get asked about brushes a lot. And um, when I'm using glue or gesso or something messy, I definitely don't use my good brushes. I use the ones that I get from the kids section of the craft store. And then I can just uh, rinse them out in cool water and they are really good tools. You want this to have a nice, you, you want it to be saturated, but not gloppy. Because if it is gloppy, here's what might happen. It is possible that if it's gloppy, your tea is, uh, your bag is going to, the glue is going to dry in, in little plasticky pools. I don't know if you can see that. You, you probably know what I'm talking about. When um, glue dries and it, it just makes this little stuff. And two things. One, you can possibly peel it off. Two, so what? You can work into it or work over it. It's just not that big a deal. But three, you can cut down on the likelihood of that happening if after you've painted your glue mixture on your tea bag, pick it up and then move it to a dry section of your paper. I'm using grease proof paper. You can use a wax paper, deli paper, parchment, anything that's going to let you peel that off after it's dry. And by picking it up and putting it to a dry spot, it's still wet and it's going to stick a little bit, but it's going to be less likely to pool. And if it does, it's just not that big a deal. So do several of these. Don't want to glue it to itself. And then I let mine dry overnight. Once they're dry, you can just peel them off carefully. I broke my rule here and did not move them to a dry spot, so they glued a little bit tight, and that's just fine. Got a little tear there. It just makes it more distressed. And so just peel them off.
and you're going to start making your pages. Now, before we get to assembling and putting the book together, I want to stop for a mo and talk about a technique for decorating your tea bags, decorating your pages, and you need to do it at the messy gluing stage. So we're a little bit out of order, but we're actually not because this stage is messy. So let's make the most of it. And what I've done here is I have taken paper napkins and added them to my tea bags and let it dry. You can see there's the tea bag on one side and the paper napkin on the other. The same thing here. And now it's pretty robust and I can use this paper. This one is going to actually be bound in here as a page for some decoration. Difference, variety there. And this one uh, is, is used for the cover. I love paper napkins. One of my favorite cheap art supplies. They, uh, again, like the tea bags, they're affordable and they're easy to find. So anytime I see a pretty one, I grab a packet of them and have quite a stash. Now, most paper napkins actually have layers to them. So when you find a paper napkin that you really like, see if you can pull it up and peel off that layer. And there's almost always more than you think there are. Now I have this really thin layer that is, because it's so thin, it's gonna give me that transparency that is so beautiful. I have trimmed it very approximately to the size of the tea bag. I'm not worried about it being um, precise. Now I'm going to take my mixture, glue and water mixture. I've already got my tea bag wet. And now I'm going to put the paper napkin fragment on there and glue it again. You can see it's already turning pretty translucent. Let's see. I'm going to see if we can get that up a little bit because you definitely want to do the same. Make sure that you lift this up and put it back down on a dry, clean section of your wax paper or deli paper or whatever you're using here so that it doesn't dry gloppy. There's actually quite a bit of the glue liquid here. So pick it up a couple of times and move it around if you can so that you avoid those pooling plasticky areas. And another version of this is going to be using some tissue paper. Also goes on very trans translucent. So I'm going to paint the tea bag with the two parts glue to one part water. And now I'm going to add the tissue paper. Make sure it's nice and coated, but not gloppy. Put it to a nice fresh section. And then again, let these dry overnight. 
I have one more technique to show you with the messy glue and whatnot that will add a lot of interest and pop to your book. And that is, I'm going to make a kind of a page from gauze. And then I'm going to bind it in to my book, which is what I've done here. So it just adds some texture and distress and interest. The thing about gauze is it is very gauzy. And that's a look, but it's not one that I want myself. So I want to stiffen this up just a little bit, as I've done here. So now it's not floppy. It's got a little bit of structure to it, which is going to let it me sew it into the book as a kind of a faux page. I'm using gauze, but you could also use cheesecloth or maybe uh, linen or some thin cotton. If you have some fabric, just experiment with it and see how it goes. This is very hard to describe what I'm doing because you want to get it in there, but because it's so porous, uh, it also wants to make a layer of the glue itself which again, isn't really ideal. So paint it on there, but you really just want a coating. You don't have to even completely saturate it. So I'm pulling this out thinner and thinner. Uh, I do this all the time and I still make mistakes. So just experiment, have fun and learn. Again, I am going to pick this up. And now you can see that once I picked it up, the glue is not glopping too much into the porous areas. So I'm going to pick it up and move it to a drier section of my greaseproof paper. And then I'm going to pick it up and, and turn it around a couple of times as it dries. And it still may pool. If it does, uh, here's one I did where I got some of the pooling. Uh, it's not that big a deal because this is a book with a distressed look. This is just some more mess. But if you pick it up and move it around, you're going to make it way less likely that that happens. And now just let that dry. These are dry now, and this is how it turned out. It has plenty of wrinkling, and I am here for the wrinkles. It actually feels now almost like a paper leather, and it's pretty robust. This is the one with the tissue paper. And the gauze, where I used the, the glue mixture very sparingly and lifted it while it was drying a few times, did not pool. Yay! It's, it's not stiff like a buckram, but it is got enough oomph now that it will hold a, a shape, sort of like a paper shape. So, well done. Now it's time to assemble the tea bag book pages. I'm not worried about making the edges match. They're not going to match. Not, not in this messy one. I'm more interested in where the center is so that they're, you know, pretty consistent in their mismatchedness. I'm going to add a few other papers before I bind. This is a tea bag on a paper napkin. I'm just going to put that in there. You could use anything. You could use sheet music or old maps or printed text, uh, some plain paper. Just trim it to approximately the size of your tea bags. And now let's see if we can make these match a little bit more. Okay. 
now let's think about a cover. You do not have to have a cover. I make these sometimes and just let them be natural and floppy and fun. But if you want to add a cover, you've got so many options. You could use any heavier paper, maybe some tea dyed watercolor paper. I have, uh, you could use cardstock. This is a, a pad of scrapbook papers. It's a little like a light cardboard. And that would make a really pretty cover. I also have a scrap from some echo prints that I made of onion skins. And that would also, that's a strong contender right there. So look in your scraps uh, from old projects, printing things, uh, scrap box, and use your imagination to make a fun cover. Today, I'm going to use this tea bag on a clear um, a paper napkin. It is quite a bit bigger than my pages. Now, normally, uh, ordinarily when you bind a book, and I am going to say ordinarily when you bind a book several times in the next few minutes, because uh, when you bind a book, usually there are a lot of rules, or a few rules, but you need to stick to them. And today I'm going to ignore most of them because this is a whimsical, for the fun of it project. But ordinarily, when you bind a book, you would want your cover to be trimmed much more closely to the size of your papers. But since this is an art journal, and it's for me, I'm going to go with this big oversized cover. To put your pages together, you're going to need needle and thread. Normally in bookbinding, you would use, probably use a waxed uh, linen thread, but you don't have to have that. You can use, you know what's good in a pinch? You can use dental floss, because what is dental floss except a heavy waxed thread? You can also use embroidery floss or any kind of heavier thread that you've got on hand. The needle has a bigger eye than normal because of the heavier thread. I got mine in this packet at the Sewing Notions store that has uh, heavier duty needles for working with canvas and leather and whatnot. But there's no reason whatsoever why you can't just use plain old needles that you buy anywhere and choose the ones with the biggest head, the biggest eye in them and you're going to be just fine for this project. Normally in bookbinding, you would measure like crazy because even being a millimeter off or a fraction of one, if you're putting in lots of signatures in time, that tiny little incremental thing is going to throw your whole project off. But thankfully, this is not that project. Still, I do need to know where the center of my book is to make it consistent. So I'm going to fold this over and mark that off where the center is. And I'm just going to use my eyeballs for the rest to make sure that the cover and the pages look nice. And I am going to do a little measuring before I start sewing. From the top of my cover to the bottom is nine centimeters. So I'm going to go in at four and a half. That's the center there. The stitch that we're using today is called a three hole stitch. And um, so we need three holes. Uh, n normally when I bind a book, I would go up quite close to the top and bottom of my page to make sure I really grab the and get a tight seal, tight stitch. But because some of these papers are shorter than the others, I'm just gonna go and, and come in at a fun, what the heck. Okay, 
There's my center. One there. Blah. And there. So I've got my three holes. I want, let's see. Now, again, I'm just using my eyeballs and then I'm going to clip this together on either side so it doesn't float around on me too much. But before I sew this together, I want to show you on this white scrap piece of paper what the three hole stitch looks like so nobody gets startled. It's so easy. It's so easy that I hope it will lead you to try other kinds of book binding in the future. But let's just get started with this one. And I switched to brown because I the white was making me uncomfortable. Uh, let's see. You want your thread to be about one, two, three. Three lengths is fine. I'm going to go with four because uh, I uh, have made too many mistakes where one extra length would have uh, saved me. So it's just a little bit of bookbinding neurosis. You're going to start by sewing into your center hole. And you can either go in through the inside or the outside. Now, if you go in through the outside, the only difference is if you go in through the outside, you're going to end up at the end with your threads on the outside. And I like that. It's decorative. And you could even put some charms, thread some charms on with that. Or you can go from the inside. Okay, so this is the inside of our book. And then if you start on the inside, your threads are going to end up on the inside and you can trim them and they won't be seen. It's just a style thing, whichever you like. So let's go in from the inside, starting with the middle hole. And I'm just going to hold this with my thumb. Now go through here. and pull the thread into your top hole. Make sure it's tight on the other side. Go all the way down, sew into that third hole. Make sure it's nice and taut. Go back into the middle hole And that is it. Make sure your threads are pulled nice and taut. And then you can tie them. And you've got your book sewn, done, and dusted. Now the, the book is done, it's sewn together with our three stitches, and it is so cute. And now I'm ready to start decorating it and turning it into a tiny art journal. Here are some ideas for things that you can use to decorate your pages. This is such a great opportunity for using up small bibs and bobs of things. Look in your scrap box. I'm pretty sure you have one. And just you can just use small pieces because you've got small little itsy bitsy pages. 
um, look, this is uh, from an old art project. I was trying out a technique, didn't know if it was going to work. So didn't throw it away. Now I can use this, make some more scraps and add that to one of my pages. Some sheet music that got a bite taken out of it. Now I can use this just in my pages. See, so we've got a dried flower petal here. I've got some some smalls that I've cut out from magazines and coffee table books. Pieces that I printed up from way back in the day. Not even sure. I've got some tickets. Script scraps. See, here, I didn't like to throw this away, but when I printed it, it didn't print right. So I couldn't really use it in a proper project, but there's no reason why, since this is a messy, distressy book, I can't just go ahead and use that even if it's imperfect. A lot more smalls that I've cut out from coffee table books. And I just keep those. They're too small to be practical in an altered book, usually. But this is such a small little book that these small little pieces are going to be just fine. You can use... These are some dictionary smalls, just from an old-timey dictionary. They're not hard to find in thrift stores, and they often have these little thumbnail illustrations. You can use stamps. Um, I do find the stamp pads don't give you enough oomph on these pages, so I will be showing these with acrylic paints or gouache or gesso. And you can paint on these papers, but again, because the paper is so porous and messy, watercolors are going to get swallowed up here. So you want to think acrylic or gouache, something that's heavier with more pop. Normally, I would use uh, acrylic gel medium, but I think today, because I am working small, I'm going to use a glue stick to put my pieces in. I'm not going to decorate this entire book today. That would be a completely different video about making an art journal. But I am going to show you a few pages to give you an idea of how these techniques and how these small pieces can work on your teeny tiny pages. And one of the things that's really great about this working this small is you have permission to be wild. Sometimes when we work in a bigger format, uh, being messy and uh, going outside of the lines can be intimidating. I'm not sure why, but it sure can be. And uh, this way, the, you're just working so small and you've already got such a mess going Lean into that. Make it crazy and beautiful. Go big. Ah. So another thing that I'm doing here, speaking of not staying in the lines, is I'm deliberately letting pieces hang over the edge of my little pages like this. So we're getting a lot of texture and layer coming right off the page. See, it's bigger than the page and I don't care. Let's 
do that. It's an old rose petal. I'm not going to put the glue on the rose petal. It's too delicate. It would not survive. So I'm just going to put a thick bunch of glue there and hope for the best. Yeah, I think it's going to work. Because these pages are so thin, be aware that when you glue something on, or especially if you paint or use liquid media, it's going to seep through to the other side. So it's a good idea. I'm just going to make one right now. To use some of that wax paper or greaseproof paper to put between your layers when you're working to make sure you don't glue stuff to the other side. Unless you mean to. Yeah, okay, I like that. I have some found words that um, came from a children's book with oversized text, and that looks fun. So let's see. And then I'll put those down. And we are off and away decorating the pages. I think I'm going to let that show through on the other side. I don't not like that. I want to show you how you can use a stamp with the gesso. I've painted a layer of gesso onto the uh, grease proof paper and now I'm going to put my stamp in there and again I put a piece of paper underneath otherwise I would be the gesso would seep through the pages and you can see how much pop that's giving on that parchment color so if you're going to use a stamp, you might want to try it with the gesso or with some acrylic paint. Let's look at this one. I'm going to add it to the stamp like this. Put a couple of colors there. Make it gloppy. You're going to want a stamp that's got a lot of resolution, not too much detail. Big and bold. Here's the 
backside of that. And again, the, the gesso and the paint have gone right through. And I like that. I'm not going to cover up the backside of this one. I'm just going to let that page be bold on both sides. Now let's look at that technique again. This is a stamp of a, a kind of a checkerboard. And I'm going to put some acrylic paint here. Needless to say, if you're working with your stamps with acrylic paint, you need to rinse them in warm water pretty quickly or that acrylic is going to uh, harden and not going to want to come off. I like that a lot. And when I turn it over, there we go. Even though I made some paper leather with uh, the tissue paper and tea bags with a lot of glue at the beginning, there's no reason why you can't add it at this point in a different way. This is just a little scrap from the scrap box. Something came wrapped in it. There's no way I was throwing that away. And now I can put this down, get a little bit of translucency there, but definitely creating some, some patterns and contrast. And you can use that to start some layers. This is an old scrap and it's again it's got tears and rips in it so I don't really want to use it in one of my good altered books but that gives me permission to use it for this fun piece here without worrying about it. So we are off and away making pages in this book, layouts that are messy and pretty and fun. I want to do a little flip through. This is a book that I made earlier this week. It's also, this is tissue paper on tea bags that dried overnight for my cover. And I added a dried flower that was left over from another project. This is some washi tape. I don't use washi tape much, but uh, on these small pages, I found that this one really popped. This is an abstract flower I painted with uh, the acrylic paints. I like kingfishers, but this one, his legs got torn off somewhere, so I didn't really want to put it in one of my uh, real projects, but he looks really good on this page, so I'm happy he's there. There was no answer, and they were a little uneasy. Here's where I put a paper napkin with flowers on a tea bag. And even with those two layers, it's so translucent that when I put down this dictionary small, the text on the other side comes right through. You get a lot of layer and texture there. Since this is a botanical, I went ahead and added a vintage cigarette card of some flowers. And 
on this scrap of map from uh, an old atlas. I just inked up the edges there with some blue ink and I added a Madonna and I gave this lady some wings. Again, I want to show you that they're sticking out all over the edges. You don't have to stay on the page. This started out as an abstract collage with bits from the scrap pack. And then I just added another uh, lovely Madonna there. An over-the-top rose that I cut out from a gardening magazine that I got for 10 cents at the thrift store. Another bit of washi tape. This is an abstract rose that I painted with gouache. And a, it bled through to the other side, so I'm just going to leave that. And this is fun. This is, um, we bought a microwave, and when I broke down the box for recycling, inside I saw this old-timey corrugated cardboard. Well, I couldn't just throw that away, so I've kept it in the scrap box for some art supplies for some texture. And another abstract collage with some stamping and gesso. I have, I'm going to add a wrap here with some sorry silk ribbon. It goes really nice with those matte parchment colors. But you could use twine, or any kind of ribbon that you've got. And now it would make a really charming, one of a kind, super inexpensive present. There you go. I am going to France on Thursday, and I'm going to try to post as often as I can with some illustrated journal making, some travel sketchbook sketching, and also to show some treasure as I find it on the road. When I get back, I have one more tea bag video to show you and that is how you can make these super unusual charming decorative bowls from tea bags please subscribe to my youtube channel and turn on the notifications and then you'll find out when that goes up you won't miss it in the meantime, if you have any questions, any feedback, or any ideas that you have for working with teabag art journals, please share that in the comments below. Also below this video is a text box, and in there you can find out about my online classes and what's going on here at Book and Paper Arts. Until later, get up and go make something.